report. There's a lot of discussion I hope that folks will be able to have and, um, and anecdotally talk about the experience, a lot of folks that were there. I just want to hold this up in light of the fact that we didn't get the video. It's from the Charlotte Observer. I pass this around. This is the main, the main paper of Charlotte. So interesting, the police said there were 800 people out. I, I, you know, like, this, this is clearly 800 people. Yeah. 800 people showed up for this march, um, according to the police. I just want to pass this around. And, and I want to just add, you know, comments. A lot of what um, I want to do is just give a flavor of what, what happened down there. Know that there's going to be lots of moments and throughout this talk where I say the words awesome and they rock. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's just going to keep coming up over and over again. I'm also incredibly tired, but with the understanding of a good tire, a good revolutionary tire, because a lot not only was achieved and accomplished there, but really comrades, the fact that at this moment we can um, say that there is now a Charlotte Solidarity Center is tremendous, tremendous thing. So with this said, as, as comrades know, every four years we have the elections. Um, it can, for us, particularly politically, it's been you know, a, a decision about how are we going to intervene in some way, shape, or form because it is really the moment that the, it's almost like taking a, a pin into a balloon and it just lets the air out of everything political and struggle oriented because so much of the movement gets so caught up into who's going to win. I mean, if you're paying attention right now, I probably know more about Michelle Obama's dress or what she said. And this is real. This is real. This is even more radical people in the movement are like posting everything and sending out everything about her speech and comparing her to um, to to um, Mitt Romney's partner, or to whatever you know Obama said. And, and this is you know again for many people this is what you know it comes down to. Even folks that are you know looking at the Green Party candidate, looking at you know um, Peace and Freedom candidate on the West Coast. With that said, a lot of times for us, every four years, we're looking how can we intervene? Can we run our own candidates? Can we, you know, use this as a way to tour? In other, in other years, we've done our own form of civil disobedience at the RNC and the DNC. But we can say without certain, um, this is probably the very first time we as a party decided that we were not only going to just intervene in elections, but we were going to actually create a mobilization that would not only look at uh, how do we quote unquote intervene politically, but how can we actually mobilize people on the ground? How can we even create a movement, or more importantly, give aid to the struggles on the ground? With this said, without having a branch in that particular city. And that, I think, is really significant. So with, with all of that said, first and foremost, for the last year, I believe October 28th, I think the comrades started and formed the coalition um, that has now become the coalition to march on Wall Street South. And of course, that wasn't the original name of the coalition, um, but this is, the, this is the name that has come to be. Here they are, and I want to say again, when we talk about Obama, this is no easy undertaking with the understanding of what you know, what does it mean to have a two-term, quote-unquote, president, black president, in the South? And what does it mean, particularly for our comrades, for us as a party, to even project we're going to have a demonstration uh, during the Democratic National Convention in a city like Charlotte? Not only is the home of, you know, Bank of, uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, my God, Duke University, with what Duke Energy means, not only just to, we can talk about Appalachian Mountains and, and folks and what fracking and everything means, and, but we're also talking about foreclosures. We're also talking about what does it mean to be in the state that is the least labor organized in the entire country, North Carolina. That to be in a union is still, in many ways, especially when we're talking about the city workers, is still um, being, a, 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 being an employee at will. I mean, while we're just in the last week, um, the firefighters, the police department, all the various city workers, city unions decided to have some form of either demonstration or rally or call meetings because of the contract situation that they are experiencing there. In fact, the firefighters boycotted the Democratic National Convention. And it was it, it 
took this coalition because of the, the, the firm on the ground for actually the president, quote unquote, for the White House to say, we better start negotiating with these city workers because this is embarrassing how the city of Charlotte has treated these city workers. With this said, one of the things that, that is so dynamic about this coalition, and there, I mean, we've talked about this so much, about all the various attacks, really, from the left and from the right around this coalition. I think the thing that's really tremendous about it, that is a homegrown, southern, working class coalition of over between 80 to 90 different organizations that came out. This is a coalition, and it's so different than you know, many experiences we've had in New York and other places, where there wasn't two or three different coalitions and fighting, you know, in fighting going on. Not to say that it wasn't like perfect, but the understanding that here's a coalition so broad and diverse, from immigrant rights groups to labor movement to LGBTQ organizations that came around this coalition, and that they could take up in the Bible Belt, in the South, issues around Palestine and have that be one of their central demands. How one of the central demands be around LGBTQ rights. This is a really a very dynamic thing, and one of the things that comrades, particularly in the Durham branch, want to say about how how tremendous it was to work inside a coalition where there was so much unity among people, um, and and the understanding that they wanted to take this further. Where else did they could go with this? So, with all of this said, I just want to talk about some of the things that we gain. 7,500 press and media events happened around this coalition. 7,500. This is everything from press conferences to um, articles. Um, we're trying so hard to get Naja's video up. I mean, one of the great things that happened to Naja, who is um, our uh, hopefully soon to be comrade, but also the, the son of Richard uh, Casali, uh, helped to create a, a PSA project that um, showed um, what the coalition looked like. Because there were so many attacks about this coalition. You're not attacking Obama. You're not left enough. You're not doing this enough. Whatever, these different things. We can go on about the different people from Cindy Sheehan to other folks that attack this coalition. So one of the things was like, let's show who this coalition really are, is and who these people really are. That they're local community-based activists that there are local folks thinking about their own situations around whether it be around the endowment, around foreclosures. And one of the things that went up on a day-to-day -day basis on the website was just PSAs to just show this is who and this is what the face of this coalition looks like. One of the, another thing that happened, I think it's very important, was that on, the, on September 1st was the Youth um, and Immigrant Organized um, Festival, um, a revolutionary festival that happened uh, where the oldest person organizing it was 24 years old. The senior, most senior person that organized that event was 24 years old. And how, are we here? And so, with that said, under the most um, horrible conditions, there was a rainstorm, a monsoon actually, that totally sort of wiped out the outside, ruined tents, all kinds of things. Folks were able to have a hip hop show that had Gregor Diaz and other hip hop artists, but it, I want to say, with this incredible sense of unity, we had no space. There was, after the rain came, there was nowhere to go. They had had an event outside, and the rain came, it was, it was sort of washed out. People took over a convergent space that we had, and within an hour, totally swept out everything that was there, and, and I'm sweeping everything. Okay. Swept out everything out of the conversion site to make, to make it available so the young people could actually hold this concert. Everyone pitched in. It was just this incredible, incredible sort of act of solidarity um, that folks um, did with each other just to make sure that this hip-hop show that was a tremendous success happened. Again, we have put out that over 2,500 people marched for three miles. <laughs> <laughs> three days for three miles in over 90 degree weather for over th three hours. <laughs> How many times can I say three hours? Uh, it was a tremendous, incredible march with young people and, and um, well, let me just put intergenerational young folks chanting leading security to um, you know older folks on the lead banner and just amazing, tremendous spirit, as folks can see um, from, the, from the paper. But the main thing about this march, 
as long as it was, was that it hit the targets that were necessary. Um, move, marching down what they call uptown, but downtown um, Charlotte, going to Bank of America, going to Duke Energy, going to Wells Fargo, going to the actual stadium where the DNC was. And this was a tremendous um, show of force. Another thing that I think is important also too is, is the role and particularly of um, around immigrant rights in this, in this mobilization. Um, in particular, not only were there so many immigrant rights organizations and leaders involved in the coalition and, in, and doing the organizing, but one of the things that was really important was that the Indocubus, who um, were planning to come to the DNC, but changed their plans. And folks know 40 writers, undocumented um, migrant uh, workers, uh, took to the, to the streets for six weeks and did direct actions and civil disobedience. You know, daring to be arrested, getting arrested, and, and trying to raise the, um, the stakes around the, the question of the question of people being um, people um, again that the slogan was without um, no papers, no fear. Um, people being able to say and look at the, the racist, brutal immigration policies of the United States. With this said, they chose to change their trip completely and come to the DNC early, <coughs> particularly to be in solidarity with the coalition, which was very important. They were going to come later on in the week. They chose to come on September 1st so they could be there and have, you know, and be with folks. They themselves took about 10, I think 10 or 15 arrests. Last couple of time, I think on Thursday, right? Thursday, they, I think they took about 10 different, or they took about 10 arrests. In fact, even intergenerationally, from what I understand, mom, dad, child, all together getting arrested, like family getting arrested with other folks from the bus. So wrapping up, and I hope other folks will share stories, I want to also just, because September 17th is coming up too, where it's just an anniversary of Occupy Charlotte. Um, Occupy Charlotte. Oof. Of Occupy uh, Wall Street. Tired. Thank you, John. Uh, one of the things that I think is really tremendous is that, and with the intervention, I want to just acknowledge the intervention of our comrades and our founders too. There was uh, there was no housing. The, the, you know, one of the things Elena raised was that they made they made them go through so much. The city created all kinds of ordinances. I mean, we had to fight to get every permit. We tried to be in front of every single thing, and there was no housing, you know, no camping. If you went into any, we couldn't even march in certain, like, um, red zones or whatever, or like, you know, um, various zones, because you could be arrested for even having a backpack for anything. It was just sort of ridiculous. By the time that the, the buses started to come in, we created um, a situation where we said, and put it back on the city, what are you going to do with all these people coming in? Where are they going to stay? And we advocated and organized around them opening a park, Marshall Park, which actually is a statue of Martin Luther King, where we had a press conference. And about 40 to 60 tents went up in Marshall Park. And then a new encampment came up, where people came and brought food. But one of the things that made it that people, we also came up with this thing was like everyone from the country, around the country come and reoccupy this, this park. And this was in solidarity with the Occupy Charlotte, which from what I understand at this point, we have pretty much for the last few days sort of been an affinity group, part of the party, and Occupy Charlotte, running around in the streets. In fact, on, please help me again, lost track of time, Thursday, I think we had a Cuba demonstration, 300 people, am I correct? Cuban Five. Cuba said, free the Cuba Five, 300 people. All 300 people marching in the streets without a permit, going whatever direction they wanted to. I hope Caleb and other folks that were there will give wonderful stories about this. But again, every single thing that the city said about permits that are shut down, completely, completely like off the table. We occupied a park. We ran around in the streets. There was only about 20 or so arrests. They really, really had to like sort of keep their hands off folks because of the tremendous support. And last but not least, I guess I just want to also just say comments. The, the thing that, the, for me, one of the biggest highlights of the event was really who we met. The people that we met, not only in Charlotte, but all of, from North Carolina, particularly, and I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think, like, for the most part, I mean, the age range was from people in their 70s and 80s to people in, that were 17 years old. 
tremendous activists. I mean, really incredible folks that came out from all kinds of re reasons, from them themselves having children that have been incarcerated, from them themselves really looking at, about, looking at the fact about their own homes being foreclosed, them being students that wanted to fight around you know, the whole struggle around tuition heights. And a lot of these folks, not only I want to say that we can say for sure, two folks have started the candidacy with a party at this point in time. And there's a few other people who, because of the Marxist school and because of the organizing that has happened, are really seriously thinking about not only joining, but are planning to come to our conference in November, which is a tremendous, tremendous victory for us. So comrades, with this said, I guess I just wanted to to leave with this, and hopefully other comrades will raise this. You know, despite everything from a monsoon, bedbugs. <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't discuss <laughs> um, Anything, with all kinds of like exhaustion, people just like, I mean, let's be clear, this was really took a lot of energy and uh, stamina. But I want to just, just big up the comrades um, of our dorm branch, who just, who, who did not sleep in their own beds for two months, you know, nonstop. Who came, who, I mean, I just talked to Elena, who is like, they just packed up an office in the Convergence Center. No, they're doing that tomorrow, I think. But like, that it's been like a series of like logistical things that have just been tremendous. To, to not only the expense and the cost and the fundraising that comrades have done, but this also, I want to say, not only just the Durham comrades, but also the comrades around the country, too. Like, it was unbelievably heartening to hear things like, we consider Sarah Flounders, or we consider Diane part of our coalition or that you know, our, our comrades are out doing outreach on the buses, or our comrades are going door to door, knocking on doors, and talking to workers in their communities about coming out to this march. That, uh, that young people that march in this, I hope they show it, the young people that march in this marching band from their, from their high school said that this was the greatest moment of their lives, and how tremendous it was just to be in that march. This was the best day ever, was something that was tweeted from young people who marched with us. It just was, again, I will say awesome and awesome and awesome over and over again. This is, I mean, really something about, this is a, really, truthfully, comrades, it's been a, a stellar moment for not only the party, but for the movement. As Elena raised, that they didn't just come in and do a demonstration. They helped build and mobilize and support the struggles in Charlotte. And now we have a better relationship with them. Now we have the basis to really build not only a branch there, but to really show this is the way, this is what, class solidarity looks like. This is what it really means to be part of a revolutionary vanguard party. This is how we really give aid to the struggle. And comments, this was tremendous. Build a workers' party.